So hello everyone and welcome to today's session. I am Bhavesh from the Swift Enterprise Product Management Team. And today we'll be taking you through the updates that are part of our 5.1 release. So before I begin, I'd like to assure you that the webinar will be recorded and it will be shared with all those who had registered for the session. And uh, we would like to hear from you. So please type in your questions uh, and feedback uh, in the Q&A box on the right hand side of your screen anytime during the webinar you will take up those questions towards the end of the session. So uh, the agenda for today's session is we will go over the uh, areas, uh, mainly agile, the cross item pivot analytics, and in general, the UI UX enhancements that we have done uh, across the application. So in the area of agile, what we have done is we have made enhancements to ensure that the blocking action becomes more apparent and at the same time uh, you will also be able to analyze the blocking actions uh, in our dedicated new blocking reason analysis widget on the cross item pivot analytics front what you will see now is we have given abilities for you to uh, save this uh, report structure and also drill down upon the uh, details of the totals that you are seeing in the pivot analytics and finally look at some of the uh, ui ux enhancements in the area of execution board and the work items in general so without further ado uh, let's get started with the demo uh, let me switch to the application now so first up what we're looking at is the execution board related updates uh, for our agile projects uh, so what i have here is i have loaded the execution board and as uh, most of you would have done that you have we would have configured a lane uh, for your value stream and uh, built a lot of columns maybe in hierarchical format the way i have done uh, to map your value stream onto the execution board now it could happen that uh, not all of the columns are always having cards in it and what that deters you from doing is uh, every time you have to scroll to get a complete visibility of the cards across the value stream. Now, one of the ways you could deal with it is by changing the zoom level to a high zoom level so that you get a better visibility, but then uh, you would end up losing the details uh, that are shown on the card. So what we have done in this release is just to uh, ensure that you continue to have the same level of uh, detail that you've chosen at, on the zoom level but to avoid uh, seeing these empty columns you have an option on the swim lane uh, bar itself to collapse the empty uh, column so all you have to do is just click it uh, on the toggle and it will automatically collapse all the empty columns so this way i have a complete visualization of all the cards on my user story development uh, value stream now uh, if you are going to filter further on the execution board Let's say in this case, I'm going to select a sprint and I'll select a sprint. Say, since I'm looking at the release 17.0, I'll apply the filter of 17.1. And you'll see that apart from the design and automated, now my deployment column has also collapsed because uh, for sprint 17.1, it didn't have any cards for that column. So uh, if your filter criteria keeps on changing, it will adapt to it and ensure that the empty columns are not shown when you have this uh, toggle enabled. Uh, you can always open up the empty columns and move a card inside them and you can continue working the way you would want even then. So uh, it's as easy as it was uh, earlier for you to move cards even if this uh, collapse empty columns uh, preference is on here. So uh, that's uh, how easy it has become to uh, just view only the columns with the uh, cards in them. And at the same time, what we have done is uh, if you are still having a lot of columns there and uh, having cards uh, along all, all of those columns, uh, when you do a horizontal scroll, we are ensuring that your parent column name or the swim lane name keeps showing up as you uh, go across the board. So my user story development or in this case, if I uh, go further, I'm still able to see that the technical or the complete child columns are a part of my design column. That wasn't the case earlier. So you will always have the visibility of the parent column as long as you are uh, seeing the child columns below them during the scroll. So uh, that's how easy it has become to work with your execution board. So coming back 
to the enhancement related to blocks. So uh, one thing uh, you may have noticed is that uh, the block cards are now much more apparent. So if you have blocked a card, uh, it will come across much more easily. And uh, the moment you hover over it, you will also see the uh, reason and the uh, comment provided by the user who has blocked the card. So uh, just to demonstrate how that works, uh, let me click on the block icon. And what you will see uh, as part of the update in this release is that along with your blocking comments, you can now also select a blocking reason. So what we have done is we have uh, shipped it with some uh, predefined values, uh, which are typically the reasons why a card gets blocked. One is insufficient information, the person is on leave or the resource dependency, task switching, or uh, if you have a whip limit set, uh, basically you're not able to take more cards. So you're uh, putting a blocker on it. So depending on all these reasons, you can uh, decide whether the card can be blocked or not. Uh, so this is a drop down which can be configured to have your own set of values based on your organizational or project needs. So you, uh, you can have your own set of uh, classification for blocking as well. So I'll quickly type in a comment uh, why I'm blocking this card uh, saying that probably the mobile app uh, version of the visual design needs to be provided I'll save that so the moment I do that uh, the card would get blocked and like I said uh, on hover you will get to see the blocking reason as well as the comment that was given and that is apparent across all zoom levels so no matter on what zoom level you are you'll always uh, find that information uh, handy whenever you are doing a uh, hover over such cards now, once I have blocked the card, uh, what happens is it also helps me uh, go back and analyze which, uh, which are the blocking reasons which have contributed uh, to the blockers uh, most of the time. So this release, uh, what you will see is for your agile projects, you will see a new widget called blocking reason and uh, blocking reason analysis widget is one of the agile analytics widget, which you will uh, find in your dashboard. So if you over your agile analytics with groups so this is one of the new widgets that is now being made available so whenever you drag and drop it uh, it will automatically plot it for the current release and sprint and in this case uh, i have had uh, set, uh, six blockers in uh, having insufficient information um, three with resource dependency couple of them for task switching and one for the web limit exceeded so it is going to be sorted by the most number of blocking reasons that have contributed to the blocks so you will be able to focus uh, quickly on which are the reasons that you would want to address first and reduce those reasons the next time this uh, new release or sprint starts. So uh, to know further, what you could do is you can drill down on it, you can click on the bar and it will show you all the cards which are blocked with insufficient information. So uh, make note of that, that this is not the currently uh, blocked cards. Uh, these are the cards which were blocked with the insufficient uh, information classification. So a couple of them are uh, blocked even currently and a couple of them were blocked in the past. So you can still drill down and uh, look at the card, see all the details, why it was uh, blocked with the comments as well, and also decide to unblock the card from here itself. So that's how easy it is to drill down to the blocking reasons which have contributed uh, to the blockers or, uh, during a sprint uh, for your uh, team. Now, um, while we are looking at the user story here, a uh, couple of announcements which we have done as part of this release is to make the uh, UI um, much more in line with what we have for a two column layout. So user stories, we have seen that typically are used uh, having a rich text, which has a lot of content and uh, some fields which are uh, going to help me track the user story. So this typically is configured as a single column layout so what we have done is we have kept the field lengths also uh, in line with what we have with the two column layout. So your typical drop down fields or textual fields or multi select fields, they will render in the same manner as they do in a two column layout. While uh, your description fields, multi line text or multi line text rich text fields, they will render uh, with the full view. Now, uh, the moment you uh, click inside a rich text field, what you'll see is uh, we have uh, revamped the toolbar here. So you will get uh, uh, some new functionality 
that you, you can make use of uh, while you are working inside a rich text uh, enabled field so for example i can do a full screen mode and it it, it it will become as simple as as i would work inside a word document to update my user story so typically i would have a lot of content and that may need to be numbered underlined bold uh, have images uh, do a lot of bulleting so all that gets uh, taken care of while you are working inside the application itself so you're no longer relying on another document uh, to get that information so uh, all that gets tracked here uh, and uh, you can also switch back to the full normal view to uh, get going with it so this is uh, how uh, the ui for the single column layout and uh, rtf fields have also been announced you will uh, find a couple of uh, more enhancements as well so uh, for example uh, the bullet list uh, has more variations the number list has more variations you have the option to insert the current date and time and things like that to make your life easy while you're working inside a rich text field so what we uh, looked at is how you can quickly classify parts which are getting blocked uh, while you are working on them during the execution of a sprint so you can give a classification reason and also allow analysis to happen on it uh, at a later stage so that you can improve your processes uh, for better efficiency so moving on to the pivot analytics related uh, updates so uh, what we are looking at here is i have configured a uh, pivot uh, using my uh, new pivots analytics capability wherein uh, I have put theme and epic as my uh, rows here and the size as my column so uh, I've configured it to uh, look in this manner use heat map as my visualization so that I get a better understanding of how the uh, size distribution is for my stories across themes and epics so that tells me uh, which uh, which epic maybe in this case uh, the location product matrix has uh, most number of uh, user stories and possibly the highest number as well so uh, that's how uh, it, it's going to help me uh, analyze my data in uh, najifi you would be working on multiple such pivot tables at uh, at a, a given point of time so uh, we have introduced the capability to save that uh, pivot table uh, structure so in this case on the right hand side you will have the option to enter a new name so since i'm looking looking at my user story break up here by size I'll put that as a name I'll create it and that will become available as one of the uh, views that are, that are present for my pivot analytics now uh, the moment I unselect it I'll come back to uh, my zero state and I can go ahead and configure another view in this case let me do it based on module and customer so let's say I'm looking at uh, the customer wise breakup of which uh, uh, modules have con uh, been taken up by which customers for the user stories. So this again, I can save it as a structure saying that um, UST module breakup and say create. And now I have two views available. So I can switch between the two views anytime I'm wanting to look at them. And that's how you will uh, be able to work with multiple views. Uh, up until now, you only had the option to persist the last uh, configured view, but with this option, now you can have as many uh, views configured. In this view as well, what we have done is, if you click on any of the numbers, the total uh, will show uh, the work items that have contributed to that uh, total. Now, uh, in this case, I'm looking at it based on the count. So let me change it to say sum of story points and now i'm looking at the totals based on uh, the estimated points given for all the stories tagged to the theme and epic now uh, when i click again uh, what i'll get to see is the breakup of the story points that have contributed to making this total as 33 as well so not only i'm getting to see the work items which have contributed to this number but as well as the breakup right here uh, without going inside the details of the individual work items and if uh, still you would like to see more details you can still do that you can simply click on the row uh, for your work item and you will see the details for it 
So the drill down uh, is also now enabled for uh, further detailing of the totals. And finally, what we have done is, uh, since I'm looking at my user stories, uh, I have used a filter called uh, all stories that is going to help me fetch all the user stories which are there for this project. Uh, now, you no longer are dependent on using an advanced filter. What you can also do is you can unselect an advanced filter and you can simply say, uh, fetch me all the records which have been created, uh, let's say from November 1st, the current date and it will still fetch me the records there so no longer the use of advanced filter is mandatory you can simply fetch records based on the uh, date when they were created or you also have the flexibility to use the advanced filter as well as uh, the duration in which they were created so probably you could have uh, say a filter on priority or a release but still identify uh, only those cards which have been created during these dates so that's another advantage that you have uh, in pivot analytics after this release. So to quick, quickly sum up uh, what we looked at on the pivot analytics front is now you can save one of your uh, pivot table structures and come back to it and use it later as well. Uh, you can drill down to the work item level details to see the breakup of the summation as well as the complete details if you uh, would like to see them. And finally, uh, a date creation based filter that is going to help you fetch records between certain dates uh, or also uh, use it in tandem with our advanced filter capability. So moving on, uh, we have the uh, enhancements uh, which we looked at uh, in a while. So we looked at the uh, UI for the single co column layout has been improved, uh, made more in line with what we have with the two column layout, uh, better capable RTF toolbar, which has uh, features like the full screen and the new bullet styles. And we look at the execution board wherein you have a toggle to collapse empty columns and um, make the block cards more visually uh, prominent while you are looking at a board filled with a lot of cards. Now, apart from these uh, other UI UX enhancements, what we have also done is uh, for those customers who have taken our team dynamics module, now we have a dedicated team dynamics uh, page and uh, along with the rest of the dashboard widgets, you will be able to have the access to the team dynamics as well. So uh, that's all we had for today. Let me have a uh, look at the Q&A box and see if we have any questions. There is a question which says that, do you have any documentation for the pivot table? And yes, uh, in the online help, uh, you would find documentation uh, for the pivot uh, analytics which we have there. So you, you will be able to uh, view more information on how to use it. And you can always reach out to the support team if you would uh, need more details. So pivot analytics is something, it's part of our default product offering. So you will have access to the feature as well as the online documentation, the, the way you have uh, for the rest of the features. So I don't see any more questions uh, right now for uh, the features. In case you have any more uh, queries, uh, do feel free to get in touch with us. Uh, you can reach out to the support team or, or our sales team to uh, find out more details uh, and we'll be there to help you out. So that's all we had for the session today. Have a nice day. Thank you.